Hi everybody and welcome to the first Jamoma tutorial for the hybrid ensemble class. Um, we're going to use Jamoma in this class because it allows us to very quickly build patches for the manipulation of sound from instruments and to plug in MIDI and data controls for those uh, patches that we build. So you can download Jamoma for free at jamoma.org and it's the modular system that we're using here. Um, and install it on uh, both Macintosh and PC computers. Um, you'll find the installers here on the web page and you'll also find a little bit further information about Jamoma here. Um, there are a number of different modes and lots of additional components just like Macs. Uh, people have built a bunch of patches here. So there's more information there that you can go and read. Now what I want you to do is to open Macs and this icon should be familiar to all of you and if you click on it Max will open. Now it may open with what's called the Max window closed and so what I'd like you to do is to click on Apple M or come up here to this menu and make sure that the Max window is always open when you're working in Max because for instance it tells you when there are errors in your patch and it gives you a lot of very useful information. Now what we're going to do in this uh, tutorial is to build a very simple Jamoma patch that will look like this, which has an input, which allows us to take a number of forms of input. You can click here and see generating a click train, which is just a set of clicks, a live input from the microphone, pink noise, sound file, and a test tone. And when we're building a computer patch to play music or to do anything with sound, we need to set up how we input audio into the patch and how we output audio out to the computer hardware. And this is essentially what we're going to do now. With this input, there's a few things to note here. <clears throat> One is this audio on off button. And if we click on that audio on off button, we'll see that audio is turned on in both of these patches. And this is important because in the Max MSP auditory network, which is all of the audio objects patched together, they all need a synchronizing signal between them. And so when you turn on audio on one part of the patch, the entire audio stream of the entire patch turns on. So that's important to notice. The other is here where it says slash my input or here where it says slash my output. And these are actually names of these modules that we give them. They can be anything, but we need to set them. And you'll note they have a slash before the name and that's very important and we'll come to understand why later. The other thing I want to point out here is this master gain on each of these objects here on the input, here on the output, and we'll come back to those in a minute. You'll also note here that I've patched into the data output from this module a message box and that whenever I move one of the controls here, it sends out a message of what just occurred there. So you can see here slash audio slash gain 70.097 etc. And if I use the pan meter, you can see there it's called balance here hands to the left, hands to the right, etc. So notice the slash again. These slashes are related to open sound control messaging and all of the Jamoma patches talk open sound control. We'll come back to that. So if we wanted to open a sound file here, you'll see in the Jamoma tutorial one folder 
which is available on the server, that I've included a number of patches and a number of audio files. So let's just take one of these, say Techno Beat, open that. You'll see again here this message box telling us this long message about the fact that this file's just been opened. And you'll see here it says Techno Beat 01.wave. So let's play that. Now, click play, we have loop turned on, you'll see here, sound file play 1, it means on, but nothing's happening. Nothing's happening because we haven't turned the audio network on. So if we turn it on, then it starts to become active. What you'll see here is that we now have some signal, right? And if we turn that up, it goes up, turn it down, it goes down, etc. So we have control over that. And you'll also see here that this net, this uh, sample is looping and you can see where we are within that sample down here. So if we take the master gain here and turn it up, maybe a bit higher on the input, might be a little higher, it's clipping, and now you can see here we have control, we can pan that to the left, and that to the right, etc. You can also double click on these boxes to enter text and do very basic things that we'll come back to. You can also hear, see here that we could record the output, what's being fed out of the computer, if we wanted to record our own performance, for instance. And at the bottom here, that there's a small limiter. If we click on this plus box here, it will open the details of that, but we'll come back to that. Okay, so let's turn off play and that will stop. Let's turn off audio and the whole lot will stop. So let us quickly build this patch so you can see how it works. So you need to unlock your patch. You'll see this unlock or lock, padlock down here. A quick shortcut is to hold down the Apple key and just click in any blank space and you'll see the patch unlocks. Do the same to lock it. That's much quicker than going down to the padlock. Now, you'll see I've put a little note here for you. If you hold down the control key and click in an empty part of the patch, the menu comes up. I want you to go down to this paste from and then down to the sub menu here, Jamoma. Then we're going to go to the audio modules and you'll see a whole lot of them there. You'll see that they all start with J mod, which means Jamoma module, and then a clip, which is a self-contained little patch ready to paste in here. And what we're looking for here is the input module. There it is there. So we'll select that, and you'll see that we now have a new input module sitting here. Same as this one. You'll see the name is different. So we're going to change that by just selecting the module, using Apple I, or you can do it up here under the menus to get info. And then you'll see here where it says arguments. This is where we give it a name. So I'm going to call this um, GP input. Oops. O1. I'm calling it O1 because I may have more in my patch later. Just hit tab or click somewhere else in the patcher here and you'll see that now has a different name. Now that will become important later because you'll find that we can send messages to all of these objects based on their name. So we now have an input module. Now we're going to basically do the same control, click in empty space, paste from, Jamoma, audio, and we're going to go here now and find the output module. There it is, output. Here again we have a new output module. And you can see here, just has a default name. So we're going to go Apple I, go in here again in arguments, and put a slash, and put GP out. Hit tab, you'll see that changes again there. Now in all Max objects, you can see here these little black points, which are the inputs and outputs, and it's just the same on Jamai modules. It gives you a little bit of information here, as you can see. In this case, it says right channel. Here it says left channel. And here it doesn't really tell us much. If we look down here, we'll see that this 
doesn't really tell us very much, I'm afraid, on the inputs. But I happen to know that this is the audio input and this is an audio input. So we're just going to hook that to there and that to there. You'll note the colour of these patch cords, which denotes that they're audio patch cords. They're carrying sound. This is a data output, which we've used here to send messages to this message box. And we could connect these modules, but it's probably not really wise to do that. Now, the advantage of doing that is if I lock the patch now and move the master gain up here, it's going to move the master gain down here in exactly the same way. But usually we would want the output gain to be set at something and then fade in and out the input module where the sound file is. And so we're going to just leave that off for the moment. However, if we do the same thing that we've done up here, and that is we just put our mouse in an open space here where we want it and hit the M key, we will get a message box in Max. That's the quick way to get a message box. Let's expand that a little bit take this data output and put it into this right hand side of the message box and now anything that comes out of there will get written into here we'll see it. Right, let's lock our patch. Now if we click on open here and we see our files again let's uh, choose a little bit of piano And we can see that's uh, loaded. Let's just move that over so it's out of the way. And we can see it's loaded here. We already have our gain up quite high in both of these. Let's turn that down a little bit on our output. The loop is on. Let's turn on the audio. You can see audio's come on on all of these, but not this one. That's a little bit of a bug. So we'll turn it off, turn it on again. Now it's turned on. Make sure they're all on. We have loop turned on, let's hit play. Okay, so we're hearing something straight away because we already have the gain up here and the gain up here. Okay. Now we could go up to this one, which we happen to remember as a techno beat file and hit play on that. And now we can have both of them running together. Just turn audio off and that'll stop everything playing for a minute. So one further thing we could do is that it's really a good idea to only have a single output module, not multiple output modules. Because you, if you have multiple, you don't really know what the total amplitude is that you're sending to the hardware on the computer. So let's delete that one. Move that up there. Move this across a bit and connect this module here as well. Exactly the same way left audio to the left input, right audio to the right input, lock the patch again, turn audio on, everything comes on, they're already in play so they're playing. So now we have a single output, so you can turn up a bit, now we can fade out the drums, still hear the piano file as we would, normally fade the drums in again, etc. And so here we've built a simple two input, one stereo output mixer already in a, just a few minutes.